Already no word of a lie. When I started this review, yeah, it wasn't gonna be a uh, Hayoki. No, it was originally gonna be this MF-110A. Oh my God, what a piece of junk. So uh, it was so bad, so atrocious, I couldn't even do a proper review. So guess what? See ya. In the spotlight today, Hayoki High Tester 3030-10. A name synonymous with quality. Been around for a long, long time. Hang on to your Hayoki hats. Here we go. I already believe in 2022, we're still looking at conventional style analog multimeters, but the fact of the matter is these things are still uber useful. Yeah, nothing beats having a digital multimeter with that instantaneous, beautiful, gorgeous LCD readout or OLED or reverse EBTN, whatever you want to call it. But you know what? It's not all about the looks, baby. And in fact, some of these older style analog meters, I think they look pretty darn nice. So today we're looking at the 3030-10. Uh, this is a basic analog style multimeter. Um, it's not a whole bunch of bells and whistles. This is pretty basic Jane style analog fun here. Um, that being said, Hioki synonymous with quality. All things considered, I think it should be a decent review. Now, one of the nice things with the Hioki is the fact you get this carrying case and uh, it's not so shabby. You get the Undisputable, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous Hayoki test leads. Now these things really are a treat. I'm telling you, look at that. Oh, beautiful. These are gold tip test leads and they have that Hayoki branded L9207-30 is the uh, actual make of this lead 10 amp rating and they are cat three, 10, uh, sorry, cat two 1000 volts. Hayoki always makes very sweet test leads. Uh, silicone, the whole nine yards. Um, gorgeous. The case as well doubles as a stand. So even though we don't have a tilt stand on the meter, put it in like so and bada boom bada bing, you have your instant stand. Of course, cool. the Hayoki is made in Japan. Um, three year warranty as well, which is pretty decent for an analog multimeter. Cat 3, 600 volts, and it even has something called the drop proof. Now, I don't know if they're talking about drop proof in the case or not in the case, but uh, yeah. Ships with a standard pull out um, manual user guide. Nice paper, nice typeset. You know, let's just call it Japanese style. The Japanese always have immaculate attention to detail. Um, there's never any typos, uh, any misprints. Uh, the ink is always nice. It's just the way Japanese do business. Very, very high end. As I said, it's a basic meter. Um, we're talking 600 volts AC-DC and it only has DC current up to 300 milliamps. No high current, uh, 300 milliamps DC. That's it, that's all. Inside the case, not much else to report. Uh, we do have our standard disclaimer here. Uh, the resistance and milliamp ranges are protected up to 250 volts AC. So uh, yeah, but once this again, it's a good quality style uh, plastic going on here. No rough or scratchy edges and yeah, good Hayoki quality. I think this Hayoki is actually a really good looking analog meter. Um, I guess your mileage may vary, but for the most part, conservative, understated, but still looks like it means business. Very, very nicely done. It has some grippy plastic uh, edges here on the sides. No boot or anything. You just have that carrying case as your main protective cover. Um, yeah, so you want to be careful. And it does say it is capable of a drop. Um, but once again, you know, ah, take that with a grain of salt. And don't forget, because this is a taut band style meter, unlike the Jewel, it's suspended. So uh, you really don't want to have this thing banging around if you can help it. Back of the meter, you can see made in Japan from Hayoki. Excellent, excellent. And actually it also says that there at the very bottom as well. So you definitely know you're getting a Japanese meter. A lot of meters now are being produced um, from Japanese manufacturers, but not in Japan itself. So it is nice to see once again, uh, that Japanese quality coming through here with the Hayoki. So on the back, it gives us that 1.5 volt 
times two, as well as the uh, amperage for that fuse, a 500 milliamp fuse, 250 volt rating. We'll see if that's a glass or ceramic in a second, but uh, there you go. Oh, something else to point out too, the feet on the back here, I thought they were rubber feet at first, but they're actually just, oh, sorry, that was from my dog. Ah, um, let's get another pointer, shall we? The feet here on the back, if you notice, I thought they were initially uh, rubber, but they're they're plastic, just plastic. So um, if you're on a you know a slippery surface, it's probably gonna slip and slide a little bit. Rubber would have been nicer to see, but uh, hey, in this case, it, it seems to be doing just fine. Let's take a look at that display. Wow, very nice, nice sized font they've used here. A little bit larger than the norm for an analog multimeter. Um, you know, older you get, probably the better it is, but. Uh, Nonetheless, it's not super big, so it's still good for, you know, anybody. Uh, I like I like what they've done. Now, one thing that is missing, unfortunately, is that uh, mirror. So if you're looking at that needle head on, you might have a little bit of leeway going on because we don't have that uh, mirror. I brought in that Sanwa YX360 TRF just for a quick side-by-side. I -side. Uh, reviewed this not so long ago. Uh, a decent meter, I have to say, nice meter. Pretty well in the same price point. Um, I paid $80 US for the Hayoki on Amazon.com. Um, Sanwa was a little bit more expensive, but uh, nonetheless, uh, Look-wise, they're, they're quite similar. Now, here you do have that mirror on the Sanwa, and it's kind of important because it eliminates that parallax, uh, which is caused by the spacing between the needle and the scale. So without that mirror, you can't really have a really good head-on, perpendicular view of your accurate reading. So, uh, yeah, it's too bad, Hayoki. Didn't have that mirror. But uh, anyway, it is what it is. You'll see what I mean about the color as well with the Sanwa. A lot more uh, visual uh, going on here. So we have that nice, uh, you know, interplay with the white and the red and the orange. So it just, you know, a little bit more eye candy going on here. Not so with the Hayoki, much more conservative in its uh, overall display, but nonetheless, uh, very usable. As well, you don't have those captive leads on the Hayoki, unlike on the Sanwa, they are permanently attached to this meter, but not so for the Hayoki. Something else to take note, um, if you look at the selector switch, so on the Sanwa, it's a little more, it's nicer. Here on the Hayoki, it's buried. You kind of got to dig in there a little bit with your fingers. It doesn't have quite that clackety clack, quite that verbose um, acuity that you get with the Sanwa. So eh, in terms of touch and feel, I'm going to go with the Sanwa. Take a look at that selector switch starting at the midnight or off position. Volts AC up to 600 volts. Resistance up to 3 kilo ohm. Battery tester 1.5 volt. Current DC up to 300 milliamps. Finally, DC volts up to 600 volts. Top right of the meter, we have our zero ohms adjust. Below that, we have our positive input and on the bottom, the negative or common. So fairly generic in terms of overall capabilities here. Um, uh, but you know what? So what, right? It's an analog meter, it's not Hayoki. Is it any good? By the way, take note, there's no color coding on the meter itself for those inputs. So the negative, obviously, and the positive. Well, guess what? I'm going to try the battery test. Why not? Put it down to 1.5. Now, unfortunately, it only does the 1.5 battery test, so it's going to put a load on this uh, battery. Too bad it doesn't do 9 volts as well. But So you see the battery scale here. This is what we want to see. Probably going to be over the 1.5, and we know it's good. If not, then it's bad. Okay, here we go. 1.5 volt battery test. And look at that. Yeah, no worries there. We are 1. Point, oh, about 1.6 volts almost. So when you get a multimeter for the first time, an analog multimeter for the first time, you want to make sure that that zero adjust is properly calibrated. It's this dial right here. It looks like a Allen style screw. That is your zero adjust. Now, in this case, I have not touched it. And wow, it is right on the money. Right on the money, Hayoki. So we are online with that zero scale. We are good to go. Here we go. We're gonna measure a 5.00 with our calibrator, with our precision voltage standard reference. And what do we have? Wow, look at that. Yes, five volts. Pretty well spot on. I'm gonna give it to it. I'm gonna give it to you, Hayoki. I'm giving it to Hayoki. Excellent, excellente. Beauty. Ah, oh, analog meters are nice. 
Now take note, when you are taking scale with these meters, always best to have that meter um, flat or fairly flat on your testing surface. Next up, AC volts, 120 volts uh, is what we're looking at. And you can see I've got it on that 300 volt. Actually, you can't see, apologize. I've got it on the 300 volt scale here. All right, so it's coming up here at the top scale, AC uh, 11, 12, just over 12, about 121-ish volts is what we're seeing. Now, of course, we can change the scale. I can bring it down one and it's gonna go all the way to the end basically to the 12 and yeah, so just over 120 volts, which is good. <laughs> That's very good. Put this Sanwa in just for the fun of it. And you can see here, yep, yeah, 120 volts, just a tad over about 121 or so again with the Sanwa. Um, now you can see what I mean in terms of the, the font, definitely larger on that Hayoki, a little bit easier to read. Um, the scales are a little bit different though, if you look at the Sanwa, so you've got that 750, 250, and 50, whereas it's 600, 300, and 120 on the Hayoki, so just a little bit different, but basically the result is the same. Now take note, the Hayoki also does temperature. Yes, it does temperature as well, but you need a separate accessory. You need the 9021-01 temperature probe. Uh, yeah, but unfortunately, it's been discontinued. What? Ugh. Alrighty, so the Hayoki does LEDs as well, but there's a caveat, of course. Um, we're not gonna get any forward voltage drop. It's just going to illuminate the LED or not. Uh, but no forward voltage drop uh, at all here. And also, because the internal battery of the ohmmeter has positive polarity in the terminal, uh, we have to do the L reverso. So red test lead to the cathode and the black to the anode. So just kind of like, yeah, reverse. Here we go. Lit, lit, lit. Remember, whatever the meter says, it doesn't matter in this case. And we are lit. So five for five in terms of illumination. Good job. Output voltage in dial mode is a balmy 3.2 volts. Good job, Hayoki. In the manual, they have something called a fuse and test lead continuity check. Basically, you put the uh, resistance range to the times 1K position, put the leads together, and you see that needle deflect, and that just means that our fuse is A-OK. -okay. Beauty. By the way, no audible continuity on the Hayoki. Oh, I just... Ah, oh, well. Okay, so in resistance, once again, we want to put this on the 1K and we want to make sure that that needle is right on the zero. Now here it's a little too far, as you can see. That's where that ohms adjust is going to come in handy. I want to bring it back a tad. There we are. Perfect. Zero out these test leads again. And yeah, look at that. Perfect. Okay. Starting off with a 100K resistor. Let's see how well the Hayoki does. And oh, pretty well, spot on, 100. We're looking at the top scale. Alrighty, let's try a 10K. Yeah, beauty, beauty. Finally, let's do 1K. Oh yes. Absolutely spot on. Ah, oh, Hayoki. Remember, we're looking at the top of that graph right here, 1K, beautiful. Looking at current right now, low current, 15 milliamps is where we're sitting at. And for this, we're using the AC-DC scale. So this uh, top black line here, and you can tell that's pretty close, 15 it is. Um, let's bring it down a tad. Let's go right down to 10 milliamps. And there we are, 10 milliamps. So yes, excellent. Right at the 10. Let's take it down to five. And voila. Let's go down to one milliamp. Why not? And yeah, pretty well spot on. So good stuff. Hey, 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 wasn't bad, was it? No, not too bad at all. Okay, let's take a look now on the inside. Easy breezy to get inside the meter. One Phillips screw. By the way, it's a non-captive screw, so be careful you don't lose it. And there you are. This shipped with a Toshiba batteries, two of those AA batteries, Toshiba. 
And yeah, of course, no shielding on the reverse side of the case. Oh well, we tried, we tried. That as well, it says Hayoki 2022. Uh, interesting, so this is brand spanking new Hayoki. Awesome. Have a nice tight little package here. Look at that PCB. Um, it's a dual PCB, actually. We have that separate daughter board over here where the uh, battery housing as well as the fuse housing is located. Um, so interesting. And of course, we have the main PCB over here. But let's start off with that uh, daughter board. We have our uh, 500 milliamp fuse here at the top. And they give us an extra 500 milliamp fuse as well. So that's always a bonus. Ceramic, good stuff. And it looks like here, if you take a look, we have a, what looks like another fuse holder for a slightly larger fuse. So they might be incorporating this design for other Hayoki meters as well. And by the way, that nice brass threaded insert here for that one Phillips screw to remove the top. Those ceramic fuses are 5 by 20 industry standards. So that's a good thing. 250 volt. Here we have a plastic cast housing over the main selector tracks. Um, I'm going to lift this up a little bit just so you can get a little look inside. As you can see, there's those pads there. That's what makes contact with the selector switch. Um, yeah, I don't see grease on there per se. I don't see dielectric. It could be there though. I'm not going to pull it apart any further, but uh, overall, nice attention to detail. Uh, you can see that uh, the pads themselves, it seems to be one uh, single pad that has uh, been stretched. So yeah, I really like that style nice this plastic encasement is the back of the needle housing itself and interesting enough a lot of meters you'll find it's uh, open it's just like a, a clear plastic or paper covering but Hayoki has gone one up and they've actually encased it in a nice solid plastic uh, cover which is really really good to see okay let's flip this over and see what we have just for retaining mechanisms here and we're gonna turn it over and oh beauty there we go okay so i'm gonna have to do a, a little bit of a hold here let's start off with that selector shall we there's the main selector switch itself um it is plastic and it's feeding off of a uh, a metal inlay here let me just try and give you a better view now, that's sort of interesting so look at that we have that metal filament which is acting giving us resistance when we hit the knob and it looks to be a really tiny um, bump on there as well so you can just barely make that out so that is what is uh, giving us that uh, clickety click clackety clack with the selector now interesting enough I'm looking at this and there's really not much to, in terms of support for that uh, that metal filament so you know uh, maybe a slight concern over time, you know, is this going to stay in place? Is this going to eventually, um, you know, uh, fail? So probably maybe one of the weaker parts of the meter thus far. Um, interesting. Another interesting factor as well. Look at that. All SMD components. I don't see one through-hole component to speak of. So all uh, modern day style uh, uh, components surface mount here on the PCB. And by the way, Hayoki manufactures... Uh, their own boards and their own chips. They are a, an original OEM, a true OEM in the sense that everything here was designed, manufactured by Hayoki. Positive and negative inputs. Uh, they are the split variety, but look at that nice soldering job there in there for the long term. And look at just flip that around. And oh yeah, that is just really nicely done. Big blobs of solder. And finally, we have our pot adjustment here for the zero ohms calibration. Once again, this is you know better than average. So remember, I paid only about $80 US, about a hundred bucks Canadian or so for this Hayoki made in Japan meter. And I gotta say, you know, from what I'm seeing thus far, that's a pretty good deal. And something else as well, this is kind of uh, de facto Hayoki quality. Look at that, they've just decided instead of having this, uh, these wires just floating in the air, they've actually tapped and glued them down ever so lightly with a compound just so that they're better reinforced. And you know, touches like that, you know, little but go a long way okay gonna put it back together come back with my closing, closing thoughts. thoughts on the hayoki high tester 3030-10 oh yes this is a great analog multimeter yes it's not the most powerful that's for darn sure in fact in terms of overall functionality and feature set it just doesn't compare to that sanwa but that being said they're in the market for a uh, 
analog meter, perhaps for the first time you want to dive in, get your hands wet, get your feet wet, get something wet, you know what? This Hayoki would make a really good choice. It exudes that Hayoki quality outside and inside. This thing looks like a professional test instrument, which it is, and price-wise, you're getting a lot of value. I really wish Hayoki would have put that mirror on the scale to avoid any errors while taking a reading. But that being said, the scale itself is really verbose, nice to eat, to read, has a, a larger font than normal, and it's just a pleasure to view. No, it doesn't do high current. It only goes up to 300 milliamps. But at the end of the day, if you're looking for a really good high quality meter without paying a fortune, I don't think you have to look much further than the Hayoki 3030-10. The Hayoki. 3030-10 gets a solid four out of five stars. Yeah, this is a great addition to your toolbox or bench, and this one is staying with me. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. To the next one, keep on testing. By the way, if you're wondering what happened to that little MF-110A crapola multimeter, it makes a great coffee coaster. Honest. Yeah, baby, we play.